Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Elon Musk unveils Starship MK1 prototype. Rhett Ross plans to retire from Continental Aerospace Technologies, and Israeli Air Force pilot becomes the first female squadron commander. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. During a celebration marking the 11th anniversary of the first launch of Falcon 1, Elon Musk unveiled the prototype of the Starship spacecraft. The Starship is designed to carry up to 100 people to destinations such as the Moon or Mars. And if all goes according to plan, the spacecraft will carry billionaire entrepreneur Yusaku Maezawa and a handful of artists to the moon sometime in 2020. Starship will be powered by six Raptor engines, with up to 37 Raptors powering the booster, which will lift it into orbit. SpaceX plans to launch the rocket on a test flight to about 65,000 feet before the end of the year. On Friday, Musk posted to Twitter, Starship will allow us to inhabit other worlds, to make life as we know it multiplanetary. Stick around because we've got Around the Patch coming up right after these messages. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With all this news coming out of the aviation industry, it's time for today's trip around the patch. The Department of Transportation will award $986 million in infrastructure grants to 354 airports spanning 44 states, Puerto Rico, and Micronesia. The grants are the fifth round of distribution from the FAA's Airport Improvement Program funding. The grants will support multiple infrastructure projects, including runway reconstruction and rehabilitation, noise mitigation, emissions reduction, building of firefighting facilities, and maintenance of terminals, taxiways, and aprons. The Robinson Helicopter Company's R-66 turbine fleet recently surpassed 1 million flight hours. The R-66 with the Rolls-Royce RR300 turbine engine achieved this mark without a single reported in-flight engine failure. This accomplishment demonstrates a level of reliability that exceeds EASA's stringent requirements for single-engine helicopters performing commercial operations. A federal lawsuit has been filed by a Miami man who said he was the owner of Havana's Jose Marti Airport before it was seized by Fidel Castro. The suit seeks damages from American Airlines and Chile's LATAM Airlines for conducting business on properties confiscated by the Cuban government. American and other U.S. airlines obtained permission to operate flight to Cuba under the Obama administration. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Rhett Ross, Continental Aerospace Technologies, longtime CEO and president, plans to retire. Over the past 12 years, Ross has guided Continental through recession, the sale to Avic International Holding Corporation, and Continental's listing on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. He led Continental in five successful acquisitions to add technology and additional product lines valued in excess of $40 million. And Ross most recently championed the $75 million construction of Continental's new manufacturing facility in Mobile, Alabama. 
It has been an honor to lead this organization during such a dynamic time. I have been fortunate to work alongside such a dedicated team that has a passion for building innovative and reliable products, Ross said. A global search is currently underway for a new CEO. In the interim, Michael Skolnick has been appointed Chief Operating Officer. Last Wednesday, Lieutenant Colonel G became the Israeli Air Force's first female squadron commander when she entered the role of Nakshon squadron commander. The 35-year-old pilot joined the Israeli Defense Forces back in 2003 and finished the Air Force's pilot training course three years later, specializing in transport planes. And from 2015 to 2017, she served as the deputy commander of Nakshon Squadron, which operates surveillance aircraft. Israeli Air Force Commander Major General Amakan Norkin said G is an inspiration for thousands of women in the state of Israel. Adding congratulations to our first female commander of an operational squadron in the Air Force. We've been waiting for you for 71 years. And that wraps up our show for today. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Head over to aero-news.net if you want the latest aviation and aerospace news any time of the day. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.